Welcome. I recently helped to judge a regional science fair and it was a lot of fun and very inspiring. Sure, there was the occasional project that perhaps should have been titled, My Mom Made Me Do This Project. But most of them were very thoughtful and most of the young people there were very enthusiastic about their topics. I was especially impressed by those who in the course of doing their experiment realized there was some variable that they should have controlled for. Some of them went as far as to go back and revise their experimental protocol and take their data again so that it would be more reliable. Whether or not those young people go on to pursue scientific careers, they were scientists in the context of those projects. In the same way, you can be a scientist. In your physics class, you can take a deliberate approach. As you realize things that you may have forgotten to consider, you can go back and revise your approach to get a more reliable answer. This is mature, this is growth, this is something that will assist you in solving new problems as you go forward in your careers. I'm Dr. Courtney. This problem is essentially a conservation of energy problem. It has a couple of twists to it in that we have both translational and rotational kinetic energies to consider, and we're given a minimum condition that will help us find a more specific answer. So the big idea here is to use conservation of energy to find the start height so that the marble just stays on the loop-the-loop. -loop. Now in this problem we aren't given any numbers, we'll be solving it symbolically. For this part, the just stays on the loop-the-loop, -loop, that implies a minimal condition, and we will be able to apply Newton's second law for uniform circular motion to figure out what that means in terms of finding the minimum speed, minimum speed at the top of the loop. So as we develop this problem, we'll start with a sketch. We have the marble at the top that is, will be released. We'll go down the ramp and around the loop-the-loop. The loop-the-loop, -loop, we're told, has a radius also. We'll call that radius capital R. And the radius of the marble we'll call little r. And we're told that the radius of the marble is much less than the radius of the loop-the-loop. -loop. Let's label the positions at right before release as A and the position at the top of the loop-the-loop -loop, position B. The height at which we release the marble we'll call H. Let's look at the loop-the-loop -loop a little bit more closely. If you recall doing problems with loop-the-loops uh, -loop before, this will hopefully jog your memory. At the top of the loop, we have the force of gravity acting downward on the marble due to its mass and gravitational acceleration. At any point on the loop, the loop there is also a normal force acting perpendicular to the track on the marble. At the top of the track, it happens to be acting in the same direction as gravity. So at the minimal condition where the marble is barely staying on the track, that normal force approaches zero. As we make a plan to solve this problem, let's start with this uh, ostensibly second part first, meaning let's use Newton's second law to determine the minimum speed at the top of the loop. We'll abbreviate Newton's second law as N2L to find the minimum speed, which will be the speed V at position B. We will do that by substituting all the forces into the expression for Newton's second law. Now then we will have uh, that the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. 
So we need to express the radial acceleration in terms of quantities that we're interested in, namely the speed at B, and that will require the use of the radius as well. Then we will go ahead and solve for an expression for that speed at B. That speed at B will be the minimum. And so this will drive the fact that the H we end up with will be the minimum height from which the marble can be released and still stay on the track. Now secondly, we're going to use conservation of energy, and so our first step there will be to Our first step there will be to equate the total mechanical energies at position A and position B. Then we'll need to express those energies in terms of quantities that we have. Namely H, gravitational acceleration, the radius of the marble, the radius of the loop, uh, the speed at A, the speed at B, etc. Then we will solve it symbolically for the speed at B in terms of those other quantities. So then we will have from part one an expression for the speed at B, meeting that minimal condition, and then from part two we will have another expression for the speed at B. And I should have named these A, B, and C, sorry. Then we're going to equate those independently derived expressions for uh, the speed at B. And solve for H, the height. Now we're ready to evaluate this problem, and the first thing we do is to use Newton's second law to find the minimum speed at position B, the top of the loop-the-loop. -loop. And so we recall that the general expression here is that the net force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. The net force is going to be the force of, due to gravity plus the normal force, which we have already discussed is going to zero. The force due to gravitational acceleration is the mass of the marble times gravitational acceleration. Then we recall that the uh, radial acceleration can be expressed as the square of the speed over the radius. Now specifically we're talking about the speed at point B, and the radius is equal to the radius of the loop-the-loop, -loop, which we have labeled capital R. So, we also notice that mass can be canceled for both sides of the equation, and we can express this as gravitational acceleration is equal to the square of the speed at B over the radius of the loop-the-loop. -loop. This implies that we can say that the square of the speed at B equals gravitational acceleration times the radius of the loop-the-loop. -loop. And this is our first independent expression for the speed at B. So this will be part C. Now in part two, we equate the total mechanical energies at position A and position B. And so at position A, we have gravitational acceleration, not acceleration, gravitational potential energy. Because we have a marble that's rolling, there are two possible types of kinetic energy in this problem. We can have kinetic energy that is translational at A and kinetic energy that is rotational and we will equate that to whatever potential energy may be at B plus translational kinetic energy at B plus rotational kinetic energy at B. Now in position A, the marble is at rest, so it has gra and it has gravitational potential energy. However, because it's at rest, it does not have kinetic energy, not translational, not rotational kinetic energy. At position B, it is not at ground level, so it does have some gravitational potential energy. It is moving, so it has translational kinetic energy. It is also spinning, it's rolling, and so it also has rotational kinetic energy. 
So now let's express those energies in terms of quantities that we know or desire to find out. The potential energy at A is the mass of the marble, gravitational acceleration, times its height, which we have labeled H. That will be equal to the gravitational potential energy at position B, which is still the mass of the marble, times gravitational potential energy. The height of the marble at this point can be expressed as two times the radius of the loop-the-loop. -loop. Now what about the kinetic energy? The translational kinetic energy will be one-half the mass times the speed at B squared, plus the rotational kinetic energy, which is one-half the moment of inertia times the angular velocity squared. We're going to work with that term a little bit to put it in terms of quantities that match what we've already been working with. So as we continue with that, let's recall for a solid sphere, and it's rotating about its own central axis, the moment of inertia is equal to two-fifths times the mass of the sphere times the radius of the sphere squared. Let's also recall that the angular speed can be expressed as the translational speed divided by the radius. In this case, we're talking about the radius of the marble. So now we can rewrite this expression in part two in terms of what we've just expressed here. And so we have the gravitational potential energy at B, plus the kinetic energy at B, the translational kinetic energy, plus now the rotational kinetic energy in terms of similar quantities. Now let's take a look and see what we can simplify. Notice that in every term the mass appears. So the mass of the marble does not influence our solution, and let's cancel that out. So then we have this r squared will cancel with the r squared in the denominator, and we are left then with times vb squared. We can combine these fractions and solve for the square of the speed at B, and from that we obtain this expression. So now we have two expressions for the square of the speed at B that we've obtained independently. Now in part three we will equate those and solve for the height. So the height is here, sort of buried in this expression, and through careful algebra you can determine that that height is equal to 2.7 times the radius of the loop-the-loop. -loop. How can we determine whether or not this answer makes sense? Well, ordinarily we start with unit analysis. But in this case, we don't have any units. So that's really no help here. So what about the magnitude? Well, let's think about what we know about conservation of energy and the types of energy that are in play in this problem. If the marble were, were released from the same height as the loop-the-loop, -loop, that would imply that the total energy at A, at the release point, which we've already determined consists only of gravitational potential energy, would have been converted into both translational and rotational kinetic energies plus that much gravitational potential energy, which would violate the law of the conservation of energy if there were any kinetic energy up here. And there needs to be some because of the condition that the marble stays on the track and doesn't just fall off. So we know that the release height is going to have to be higher than the height of the loop-the-loop. H, so H has to be greater than twice the radius of the loop-the-loop. -loop. And we would suspect that, but not much higher, 
So probably not five or ten times higher because of the minimal condition that we were given. So this assessment might not give us as much confidence as we wish we could have, but it lets us know that we're in the ballpark and that we probably have come to a good answer.